The Midnights had quite a few scaffold matches against the Fantastics in the 88 Bash Tour, the most grueling in NWA history, right, Jim? I had a chance to see the one at the Kobo Arena in Detroit. Did they make the scaffolds for this tour quite a bit lower than the Starcade 86 one because of how many times you guys had to bump off of it that summer? <laughs> what were your thoughts when Dusty booked so many of those matches? Fuck! Uh, that was the... And no, they didn't, they didn't really make them any lower. And thank, I didn't take any of those bumps. Cause obviously, cause by that time I was working on two uh, blown ACLs with braces on. So no, I, they all, that was not a subject that was broached after, after Stark 86, I was never again asked to drop off the scaffold, but, and when we talked about 88 and summer and the bash tour and, and the business at the time and the talks of selling to Crockett, Dusty was doing everything. He was going to hot shot the bash 88 tour to get the people back in the buildings after a kind of a slow six to what, eight months and, and, and get them back in and then get the shit that he had going forward over as best he could, which he pretty much did because as we talked about the follow-up houses and a lot of those bash towns, were as good or better as the bashes. Uh, they were interested there in the fall. Anyway, so he's going to put, I mean, I'm sure there was a gimmick or a blow off or a, you know, it, it was just, it was the loaded mega stud card that he could ever do. So of course he's going to put scaffolds on. Of course he's going to, who he's going to put in a scaffold, not the road warriors. Um, and, and we had, you know, and the fantastics had done them in Dallas. So, you know, everybody knew what the fuck was going on. Um, and what were we going to, we, what were we going to say? Dusty, we'd rather not do that. Okay. Don't make Pittsburgh or whatever, right? You didn't see the book back in those days. I used, I uh, like to say these days back in those days, the bookers directions were not the bookers suggestions. So we just kind of looked and went, Oh fuck. And you know, they went out and did it and Stan was not thrilled. You know, Bobby never fucking hardly grumbles about anything, but it got old after a while, I'll say. And plus, we could have had better matches, um, obviously, if, without the scaffold stipulation, if we were in the ring. And so every time that we went up there, we knew we were forfeiting our chance to steal the show, which we would have done on the ground. But at the same time, the see a scaffold match live trumped another time for in drawing power. Trumped another time of seeing the Midnight Express and Fantastics have a great tag team match because at that time, the people still wanted to see the fucking heels beat up and potentially killed instead of, you know, exhibit great sportsmanship and put on a wonderful performance with a fascinating work rate and a scintillating spot rate or whatever. After you left WCW in 1990 and you were doing indies for a while, did anyone ever actually come up to you and try to get you to do something with the scaffold on the indies? Oh, um, I'm sure they did. And the fact that I can't remember, it indicates how much attention I paid to it. Uh, and I don't even, nobody even offered to, uh, or offered or asked me to jump off a scaffold or take a bump off a scaffold, but I, I'm not ruling out that somebody, oh, I'll have a scaffold match and you could manage so-and-so. And I'm like, ah, that's, that's all right. I'm good. When we did the, the one we did in Knoxville, Al Snow and Riggy Morton both had talked me into it um, because they wanted to do it. I, and so I was like, okay, but that's the only one I've ever done or, be, or been responsible for. Let's put it that way. <laughs> 